Hi everybody, it's January 11, 2018. Microsoft says chip fix may significantly slow some servers. I received this article from a subscriber who I want to thank for sending it along to me. I have posted videos on the computer problems that I've been having. Windows 7 is what I use. I've heard from so many people who are having problems with their computers that the internet is really slow. Others having problems. Well, my problem is many of my computer, uh, many of the programs that I have on my computer fail to work periodically. The slow internet service that I now have is really very, very frustrating. But it only seems to be periodic. There are hours during the day where my internet is working just beautifully and then boom I go to try to open a page, a website, and I can't get it open forever. I have said that I believe that the computer problems that we have been experiencing, the slowness on the internet, is deliberate. And here, Microsoft now, uh, it has come out that there are security flaws, there are security vulnerabilities. And the patches, the chips that will fix these security flaws are going to slow down your computer and create performance problems. But it's primarily for Windows 7 and Windows 8, not Windows 10. I posted many videos on Windows 10, how Microsoft was just going to uh, download Windows 10 onto everybody's PCs without even asking their permission. Those videos are gone. They were on Kafka Winston World. And I posted videos on the, the dangers of Windows 10, which I'll get into in a second. But speaking about these security flaws, fixes for security flaws present present in most processors may significantly slow down certain servers and dent the performance of some personal computers. The slowdowns could be substantial, but not all servers will be affected. Windows 10 won't, if, if you're using Windows 10, you might not even notice that's how Windows 10 is affected. Um, if you have a slowdown, it will be less than 10%. Windows 7, Windows 8 from 2015 or earlier will be the most affected with users noticing a decrease in uh, system performance. Okay, so when Microsoft came out and said that they were going to upload Windows 10 on everybody's computer, there was a substantial outcry from people. Um, do we not own our own computers? No, we don't own an awful lot. We pay through the nose, but whatever Microsoft wants to do, it will do, unless there is a major outcry. Okay, and then there were a lot of articles. This was back in 2015. There were a lot of articles how to prevent Microsoft from downloading Windows 10 onto your computers. So they might, may not have been able to download Windows 10 on everybody's computer. So they come up with another, another method to get everybody onto Windows 10. They screw up the performance of Windows 7, Windows 8, forcing people to buy Windows 10. Yes, I do believe that this is what is taking place. Intel confirmed its chips contain a long-standing feature that makes them vulnerable to hacking. Now, these chips, 10 years, 10 years old, really? And only after 10 years did somebody notice that there's a long-standing uh, feature that makes them vulnerable to hacking? The two main flaws, dubbed Meltdown and Spectre, and I will link below to this video, uh, Meltdown and Spectre in three minutes, so you can learn more about it. Um, 
So one or more, or one or both, I'm sorry, are present in almost all of the billions of processors that run personal computers, servers, and phones, and could give attackers unauthorized access to data. So releasing these software updates to patch these security holes will leave you with worsening computer performance. Wow! So Microsoft can't figure out how to patch up these security holes without screwing up our computers. Do you really believe that? They want us on Windows 10. Perhaps this is, you know, and you can speculate all day long, and that's what I'm doing. All right, 5G rollout, Windows 10. Perhaps they have uh, these new chips in, in Windows 10 that are not in Windows 7 and Windows 8. And the Windows 10 chips will allow them to do that Internet of Things more efficiently. I don't know, but I don't believe Microsoft. I don't believe this, oh, we now have security flaws that have just been realized. 99% market share in servers and chips are in 90% of laptops and 80% of desktops sold around the planet. Those chips, Intel. And, you know, it's not just PCs, uh, it's not just Windows, but Linux, and um, I'll link below to the article and you can read uh, on more of the information. When I, when I realized that Windows 10 was truly a privacy nightmare for all of us, I didn't want it. So many of you didn't want it. My friend in Houston, because her Windows 7 computer, she was having so many problems with it that she had to buy another one. She went out looking for a Windows 7, and there were none. She, ha she was forced onto Windows 10. But she told me that all of the problems that she was having on Windows 7, she does not have on Windows 10. So these problems that we are experiencing on Windows 7, Windows 8, are purposely, deliberately induced into our computers so that we become so frustrated that we finally buy a new computer and we'll have to buy a Windows 10. So these security or the privacy issues with Windows 10 are very, very concerning. Though I think that, look, they got us trapped in their surveillance network. We are so trapped in it with credit cards and, and um, you know, those cards that you use at supermarkets and the smartphones and smart meters and all of it. Do I think that just because I have Windows 10, I'm protected, my privacy is protected? No. They have back doors into all of our computers. Why do you think Microsoft is the monopoly it is? Because it is government. It is the internet surveillance. They have 90% Microsoft, 90% of computers on the planet are Microsoft. That monopoly is not just, well, an accident. So Windows 10 gives itself the right to pass loads of your data to Microsoft servers. Use your bandwidth for Microsoft's own purposes and profile your Windows usage. Despite these accolades Microsoft has earned for finally doing its job. Windows 10 is currently a privacy nightmare. And they even state it right out there. It's in our face in their ominous privacy policy, which is now included in the Windows 10 
end user license agreement so that it applies to everything you do on a Windows PC, not just online, but offline. Everything they have access to. And they even state it. Finally, we will access, disclose, and preserve personal data, including your content, such as the content of your emails, other private communications or files in private folders when we have a good faith belief that doing so is necessary. <laughs> this author writes, some have spun conspiracy theories out of that language. I'm more inclined to blame vagueness and sloppiness, not ill intent. Well, this author clearly is, well, still has that eight-year-old mentality, childlike mentality, very, very naive. And unfortunately, that is the majority of the American public. They do not see the evil that has manifested, the surveillance of every individual, not just in this country, but <laughs> on the planet. So Microsoft states, rather than residing as a static software program on your device key components of Windows are cloud-based key components of Windows are cloud-based. In order to provide this computing experience, we collect data about you, your device, and the way you use Windows. And it is very dangerous. Now, this article was back in 2015, um, and it gives you tips on how to um, create some security on your Windows 10. But frankly, I don't think that we have any security anymore. But I also want to bring your attention to Catherine Albright. And if you just put her name into the YouTube search bar, you will come across an awful lot of videos. Catherine Albright. Albright. She has disclosed so much vital information to all of us about our spy chips, the internet surveillance that is taking place, RFID schools. She's out there and has protested in areas where they wanted to put chips in Alzheimer's patients, put chips in children, schools, making it mandatory to chip children. And she has been successful in, in preventing some of that. Now, um, this video I will link to. I hope that you listen to it and you circulate it. The Totalitarian Nature of Surveillance. NSA, Google, and Facebook. It's unfortunate that this has manifested. It's unfortunate that we have an awful lot of Americans who just say, well, I don't care. You know, I'm not doing anything wrong. Well, there's an awful lot of people who have not done anything wrong and suddenly this surveillance state, this police state, comes right down upon them. And then they get to see, wow, I didn't do anything wrong. What the hell is going on? Like that teacher in Louisiana just asking a question at a school board meeting has the police state coming down upon her. And I posted videos on it last night. So um, this is very dangerous, and it leaves us in a position of great vulnerability to the powers that be to have our lives suddenly just crumble into a nightmare. And I don't think that there's much that we can do at this point because we lack, we lack the numbers. And that is very sad to me because we have the numbers. We just uh, have a lot within those numbers of people who are diseased by apathy. You know, I'm going to link below to this video. Spy chips threat, resist, resist RFID electronic surveillance. You know, there, there are people who believe that I don't like Christians, I hate Christians, I think they're evil. Um, these are ideas that they have uh, 
that they have in their head. Um, presumptions or the filters that we have in our minds when people say things they have these filters that allow them to hear things that are not said. I have never ever said that and frankly I have profound respect for Christians who actually live the principles they speak. So here Catherine Albright is a Christian and she takes her Christianity seriously. I may not have the same beliefs as this woman but I have profound respect for her and she gets the connection between her her beliefs her Christianity and action action when she sees something wrong she's compelled to act there's not a lot of Christians like that. That's very, very unfortunate because they still are the majority in our country. And if they actually did live the principles that they spoke, they could be quite a force to turn this country around. So you have this one woman here, Catherine Albert, who does believe that she's got to speak the truth educate people about what is taking place that it is her Christian duty so no I don't hate Christians I don't think that they're evil I do think that few take seriously their Christianity I hope you watch these videos and I hope you circulate them. Here's another one. The Rise of the Internet Surveillance State. All links are below.